Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, appreciate your indulgence and allowing us to expend a little bit of CO2. Um, appreciate the panel being here and the line of questioning on both sides has been very interesting. <clears throat> you know, I'm a I'm a farmer by by trade and always felt that uh, uh, being one uh, considered ourselves the agricultural industry being the original conservationists and we need to, we understand fully the need to uh, wisely utilize the resources that are available to us and protect them into the future. But certainly but to do that the best, most efficient way, you have to have information and good information. And so that's why the subject of today's hearing is so interesting. Um, just a couple of questions in the short time I have. Um, first of all, for Mr. Siegel, in your testimony, you've given uh, several examples of how the SCC can be used to skew uh, cost-benefit analyses of federal regulations. Even though the courts have ruled that a federal agency must provide a complete analytical defense of its model and respond to each, each objection with a reasoned presentation. Uh, you also state that one cannot consider the development and use of SEC as anything other than a substantive rule. So uh, then uh, does the social cost of carbon on its own constitute a rule under the Administrative Procedures Act? And if if so, couldn't all federal regulations utilizing SCC be open to judicial review and then in turn be overturned by courts? Well, that's that. Uh, every step of that analysis, of course, I, I agree with. Uh, the bottom line is people tend to think of rules as uh, as a, a, uh, uh, impacting the direct endpoint of behavior, but the Administrative Procedure Act is smarter than that. And it says that changes in accounting principles, for example, that reflect on the ability of the federal government to choose outcomes, to reject a project, to, uh, to uh, uh, Im implement a new rule, are themselves rules and must be treated with a full complement of notice and comment rulemaking. That's something we've not had. Every argument in favor of the social cost of carbon has proven the point of why they want this methodology to be used as a rule, as a mechanism to uh, affect rights and responsibilities of people in the regulated community. Take the discount rate. I love this. Give me a low enough discount rate, or a negative one, and give me a long enough time period, and I will justify the federal government expending money on anything you can imagine. Independence Avenue is busy. I have trouble getting across it because I ain't so fast. If I wanted to build a bridge over Independence Avenue and they told me it would cost $10 billion, if I have a low enough discount rate and a long enough period of time to add up the uh, traffic safety deaths that would be avoided by it, you will build that bridge. And if you're mandated to do so by the approval of permits through the uh, Council on Environmental Quality's oversight of the NEPA process or by federal regulation, this tool can be used to be an incredible waster of money. Mm -hmm. And why? Because, because in the inter, uh, interagency working group says, we have ethical considerations which force us to use very, very low rates and very, very long time frames because we want to be leaders. But that's what Congress is about. You make those choices. That's not for a group of bureaucrats who they won't even tell you who's on the list at the IWG to make those decisions. That's usurpation of power. It's contrary to our Constitution. Well, the issue of time is certainly one of the more serious challenges that we face in, in important infrastructure projects. Right. We're seeing that in my own state of, of Washington mm -hmm. um, to trying to, as we try to develop a, 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 a energy future for the modern times. So in pursuing permits and licenses and approval from the federal government's delays in the NEPA process, uh, I think are impeding both renewable and uh, uh, energy projects such as oil and, and natural gas, coal, mm -hmm. um, as well as pipelines, rail expansions, uh, uh, terminals for exporting and importing, highways, bridges, mm -hmm. uh, even if it's over Independence Avenue. So could you or any of the others discuss how incorporating the SCC does and will impact the current and future domestic energy development? And we just have a very short time. I'll give one second on that. Uh, you need permits to build infrastructure. You need infrastructure to realize the benefits of our new energy revolution. And incorporating SCC into that process stifles the ability mm. to predictably get permits to advance energy infrastructure. Anybody else? 
the use of the SEC in rulemaking and to, like if you actually implement in terms of regulations or taxes will actually increase electricity costs. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. My time is up. Mr. Trice. 